Hey Wes here, Airstream Wanderings. Today is I think number five in my experiments to try and create glazed pottery. And everything that I've done so far has pointed towards having a super hot fire. That is the goal today. I'm not trying to do anything traditional. I'm gonna try and get my fire as hot as possible. I have three pots. Both of these have been fired actually two times, very minimal glazing. Uh, plain pots, they're not slipped. This pot is, uh, is new. It hasn't been fired before. It's slipped in red paint. It's been in the oven, heating up to 550 degrees. So hopefully it's dried out. Actually, I don't care if these crack or not or break. The point is what happens with the glazed paint, which is made up of uh, galena, uh, manganese, copper, and some clay to get it all to stick. Uh, so let's get this thing going. I think I'm going to go through a lot of wood today, and I know I'm going to use my uh, very fancy Anastasi leaf blower to create a little bit of wind. Uh, hopefully uh, this will all work out. All right, we're started now. One of the things I did this time, you can see I lined the bottom of my fire ring with bricks. One, it raises things up so that it's not such a concave bowl. But I've also wondered if that metal bowl kind of sucks heat out of the fire. And so these bricks have been heating up. They're around 500 degrees now. So maybe that will help in the process. The fire hasn't been going very long, but it's Right around 1200 degrees on the pots, so that's probably actually hot enough to fire a pot. My goal is to hit at least 1800 degrees. If I can do more than that, that would be even better. Alright, the uh, fire is about as hot as it's going to be at this level, so I'm going to kind of knock it down and basically start again. Add plenty of fuel on top. And then add maybe a little bit of wind. Using bigger pieces, I think I need more of a sustained fire this time. I see what kind of temperature I get without adding any extra wind to it. But my guess is 1500 degrees or so, which is not enough. Well, this has gone pretty well. Uh, I am regularly getting temperatures of 1500 degrees, but I've got some right down in the middle on a pot of uh, 1750 degrees, so that's good. But I want to see how hot I can get this thing, so I'm actually going to knock it down again. Let's measure this real quick and see what we have. So it cooled off kind of quickly. So let's uh, build this up. I'm going to build it right over the top. This is really hard on these pots to get it this hot like this. Now the thing with this fire is there's not a lot of air space in it. So it probably won't get so hot without the little extra help. So we'll just see what happens first and then we'll apply the leaf blower to it. I should mention that I have a water hose here in case I need it. Because uh, it is quite a fire, but it's well contained. Things are wet around here. There's just a little bit of a breeze, which is nice. Okay, I think I'm going to heat this up a little bit. There's my trusty blower here. I want to turn it on high.
1943 is the hottest I've seen it. I see one of 2100, so that's a hot fire. Okay, I think that'll do it. I regularly saw over 1800. One was 2100 degrees, uh, so hard to get it much hotter than this. Even with the fire the way it is right now, I don't know if you can see the pots down there, but they are glowing and they're right around 1700 degrees. Well, let's see what we have. These are still a little bit warm, but I am impatient when it comes to stuff like this. Again, our goal here wasn't to make a pretty pot. It was to get a hot fire and see if that makes a difference uh, with blazing. So this is one pot that had been fired actually two other times. And it may be hard for you to see, but I would say that it is 90% glazed. Everything looks solid. Certainly, the one thing that I have noticed with the glazing, whether it fully glazes or not, boy, that paint sticks. Uh, there's nothing fugitive that happens when you add lead. So that may even be something interesting to do, is just add a little bit of lead uh, to your paint to get it to fuse better. Okay, this pot here also had been fired two other times at lower temperatures. And where the, where the paint is on fairly thick, it glazed. Um, there are some places where you can see the paint wasn't uh, on as good, maybe just didn't get enough uh, of the minerals in it. Uh, and so there's some kind of blank spaces. So uh, that's the other thing that I see is thicker paint glazes better. And I guess that's not a, a big surprise. Uh, but again, the places where the paint looks like it's applied well, I would say that uh, uh, it, it glazed fine. Both of these pots uh, do not have any slip on them. They're just raw, pot, raw, raw clay. So that's been one of my questions too. Does the nature of the slip make a difference? Because the red slips obviously have iron in those and uh, so the iron acts as a flux, reducing the temperature for the uh, silicate to melt. Uh, this pot has taken a huge beating. It has some massive cracks and it had some terrible spalling the very first time I fired. Uh, I think there must have been some uh, moisture in it. Okay, pot number three. This has not been fired before. It does have red glaze and this is a glaze I've never tried before. Uh, it looks kind of nice. Whoa, it's still hot, but I don't know if you can see, but my first look at it, it's really nicely glazed. Looks great. I would say 95% uh, glazed. And I applied this pretty thick. I wasn't trying to get a pretty picture on it or anything like that. Now, temperature wise, you know, it's really kind of hard to tell, uh, but I know I've got 1900 degrees. I saw one temperature at 2100 degrees but you know when the the air is blowing across those coals my guess is that we regularly had uh, 2000 degrees and this particular pot was on the very bottom so I think it maybe got the greatest amount of heat other things that I think made a difference lining this with the bricks I think probably helps it brought it up higher so better airflow, but I think heat retention. I measured the temperature of these bricks at the end and they were right around 1100 degrees, so the bricks got hot. So I think that helps. I also, I use a wire grate on the bottom that helps with air circulation as well. So I've tried some different things, but at this point I am convinced that the key to glazing is temperature. What that magic number is, I don't know. It's at least 1800 degrees, I think. 1900, maybe 2000. And could Native Americans got those temperatures? I think they could. Uh, I'm not sure I would want to build a fire when you have 40 mile an hour winds, if that might do it. Probably set the forest on fire. But with fanning it or something like that, uh, I think that that's a real possibility. So maybe that's the next experiment. 
Uh, but at this point, I would say this is good. And I will uh, uh, get some close-up pictures. You can actually see a couple places where the little grains of, uh, I, I assume, a lead kind of melted out. Uh, so that might be another thing is I try to grind that lead as fine as I can, and it's pretty fine, uh, but it, there is some granulation to it. So maybe that makes a difference as well. So I would say I'm pretty pleased. Uh, good experiment, and we'll have to try some other ones as well. So thank you so much for joining me on this little trail of finding out about glazed paints. Uh, your comments and thumbs up, of course, are obviously uh, appreciated. Until next time, this is Wes with Airstream Wanderings wishing you health, happiness, peace, and love. Take care. Bye-bye.